gone through countless reports to piece together the real story behind Ibrahim Traore's success. The 35-year-old president of Burkina Faso, Ibrahim Traore, is audaciously rejecting the widely held belief among African politicians that one needs to be well off to be respected by their constituents and the international community. An African president leading a humble lifestyle is an exceptionally rare sight, especially when their nation is facing economic difficulties. Numerous African politicians drive fancy cars, live in lavish homes, and dress in pricey tailored outfits, and even fly on opulent private aircraft, as if they don't care about the suffering of their people. Burkina Faso's president, Ibrahim Traore, chose not to value luxury in sharp contrast to these opulent lifestyles. Rather, he prioritizes the needs of his workers over his own, even if it means taking a pay cut of his own salary. Ibrahim Traore is often compared to Thomas Sankara, mostly because of his unwavering commitment to his people and simple lifestyle. Like Sankara, Traore would rather drive a basic car and dresses in military garb rather than ostentatious clothes. This was made clear at the Russia-Africa meeting, where Traore distinguished himself from other African leaders by dressing in military combat gear, which included tactical gloves and a red beret. Traore's emotional monument to his unwavering devotion to serving his country is further demonstrated by his unwillingness to take the income of a president and his unyielding commitment to continuing to receive a salary as a military captain. When Ibrahim Traore started his journey, no one expected this. In September 2022, Ibrahim Traore became the youngest leader of state in history. Following the overthrow of Lieutenant Colonel Paul Honoré Damiba, who had taken office in a coup earlier in the year, he and a group of junior military officers attempted a coup. In a televised speech on October 1, 2022, Traore provided justification for their actions by claiming that Damiba had not been able to adequately confront the persistent problem of insurgency. Damibe was replaced by Traore, who, although seven years his junior and lowered down the military chain of command, was a French military captain with the title of Capitaine. Traoré's rapid ascent was predicted, despite the opinion of many that it was meteoric. After working in lower positions in the Burkina Faso military, Traoré's career took a major turn in 2014, when he was sent to Mali as part of the UN peacekeeping force, MINUSMA, Testimonies from other Burkina Faso military personnel have already highlighted Traore's bravery while he was sent to Mali, particularly in overcoming a daunting complex attack by militant extremists. In addition to his service in Mali, Traore played a prominent role in combating insurgency in Burkina Faso between 2019 and 2022, resulting in his promotion to the rank of captain in 2020. After the successful revolt of Damib's regime in September 2022, 34-year-old Traore recognized that his comparatively youthful age may have raised questions about his suitability for the presidency. Speaking to government representatives in October 2022, he said, I understand that my age sets me apart from most of you present. The events that transpired were not of our choosing, but rather a necessity. Subsequently, Traore's international prominence waned until July 2023, when he participated in the Russia-Africa Summit in St. Petersburg, alongside 16 other African heads of state, convened by President Vladimir Putin. As I told you earlier, while his counterparts donned their customary opulent suits, Traore made a distinct impression by appearing in military combat attire, complete with a red beret and tactical gloves. The dress code earned him the attention, but his speech during the Russia-Africa summit held between July 27th and 28th earned him plaudits. The issue lies in witnessing African heads of state who failed to provide for their people in need, echoing the rhetoric of the imperialists who label us as militia. Consequently, they inadvertently portray us as individuals who do not uphold human rights, stated Traore. 
we as leaders of African nations must refrain from behaving like puppets manipulated by external forces. We must prioritize our sovereignty and act in the best interest of our people, Traore added. Traore strongly criticized African presidents who appear content to accept handouts. He specifically addressed President Vladimir Putin's announcement on July 27, in which he pledged to send free grain to Africa. Traore expressed gratitude for the gesture, but used it as an opportunity to convey a message to African heads of state. He underlined that attaining self-sufficiency in food production and supply for their people must be a top priority for African leaders. Traore implored them to take note of other countries' achievements in accomplishing this objective. He emphasized that African leaders should not attend the next summit unless they had taken decisive action to guarantee their country's food security and self-sufficiency. Traore's statements drew comparisons to those articulated in the early 1980s by the esteemed Thomas Sankara, who, like Traore, assumed the presidency of Burkina Faso through a coup. Leaving aside Ibrahim Traore's early life, let us now shift our focus to Traore's achievements. Compared to other African presidents, Ibrahim Traore is unquestionably gaining a significant amount of confidence and support in Burkina Faso and beyond the continent. Only a few days earlier, thousands of people participated in protests to call for an extension of Ibrahim Traore's transitional period, which was initially scheduled to end in July. Subsequently, a recent charter has been ratified, permitting Burkina Faso's military leader to prolong their authority for an additional five years, subsequent to the endorsement of the new charter subsequent to national deliberations on Saturday, May 25th. The deliberations convened in the capital city of Ouagadougou encompassed representatives from civil society, security forces, and transitional legislators. Many citizens remained uneasy even after the new charter was signed. While officials argued inside the conference room whether to prolong the transfer, a group of young people who were passionate about Captain Traoré's leadership rallied outside to support him for the next 10 years as Burkina Faso's leader. This passionate declaration of support for Traoré's leadership highlights the pervasive differences and nuances in popular opinion over the country's future course. Ibrahim Traoré's pragmatic approach to political thought has won him recognition. He has brought attention to Burkina Faso's major economic problem by highlighting the lack of a national gold refinery. Even though the nation supplied a significant amount of gold to the world, miners were compelled to ship their raw ore to Europe in order to refine it. Traore has moved proactively to start building a gold refinery in Burkina Faso as a solution to this problem. It is expected that this strategic choice will result in a large number of job opportunities and boost the nation's overall economic development. President Ibrahim Traore of Burkina Faso has spearheaded a series of impactful economic measures, including the execution of significant tax reductions and cooperative initiatives with the corporate sector to ease young entrepreneurs' access to funding. Most notably, Traore developed the novel idea of popular shareholding, which aims to privatize government enterprises and assets in order to make it possible for the general people to invest in the growth of the country. Under this effort, the public was able to purchase 20% of the government-owned telecommunications business, resulting in a very profitable business endeavor that brought in $60 million for important projects. In keeping with his commitment to budgetary prudence, President Traoré has also cut the wages of all government ministers and officials by 20%. In addition, he turned down a presidential salary in favor of continuing to earn the pay of a military captain, demonstrating his unselfish commitment to serving his nation. Journalists were shocked when Ibrahim emphasized his duty as the people's servant and vowed to stand up for his people's freedom to protest, even in the face of criticism for his own acts. 
His resolute statements about the confidence that the public has in him and his associates to safeguard the country's future are a refreshing change from the general mindset of African presidents who frequently regard their own people as subjects and themselves as sovereigns. As president of Burkina Faso at the moment, Captain Ibrahim Traore is responsible for carrying out important duties at a pivotal juncture in the country's history. He has been remarkably discreet about his personal life, keeping it mostly hidden from the public view despite his well-known status. While Captain Ibrahim Traore's professional endeavors and actions as a leader are well regarding his romantic connections or family, he has been able to focus on the work at hand and meet the demands of leadership with tenacity and focus because he has kept his personal life private. Captain Ibrahim Traore's main priorities as Burkina Faso's leader during this period of transition are probably guiding the nation towards stability and development and resolving the urgent problems the country is currently facing. To this day, there is no information available on Captain Ibrahim Traore's net worth. Given his status as Burkina Faso's president in transition, details regarding his finances are kept confidential in the public realm.